What's up you amazing hackers, I'm going to give you 5 ways to test for IDORS and we're starting right now. So let's start off with number 5, you can test manually in your browser. Now what do I mean by that? Let's say you go into your browser and you have this URL www.target.com slash invoice dot php question mark id equals 1. You can just copy and paste that, uh, you just copy it and in another browser or you just log out in that browser, you log in as another user, you paste it, that URL into the uh, URL bar and then you go to that URL and if you see the data of the other user and you're not supposed to see it, of course you have your IDOR. So that was number five. Let's move on to number four. You can use burp of course, you can use burp if you go to the repeater, you can just resend data. You can like uh, just capture your request and send it again. And then there you can replace your JWT token and your cookie. So what do I mean by that? You have to have a bit of a setup for this. You have to have two users. So you log in as your first user. You do the requests that you want to test. You put those requests into your repeater. Then you log out again and you log in as your attacker, so that will be it's your second user. And as that attacker, you take the cookies and the JWT token, so you can do that again in Burp, in the requests that he is making, the attacker. You can just take the JWT token and the cookie, and you can just replace them in all of the requests in the repeater. Now, that brings us on to number three. So on number three, we have again in Burp, you can put the you can do the same setup you can uh, have two users you can put those users again you log in as one user you do the requests that you want to do you log in as a second user but in this instance sometimes you only have to replace your cookies and sometimes you only have to replace your jwt token so that's also a possibility that you don't have to replace both because they're not in there some of the time sometimes they don't use cookies sometimes they don't use the authorization header if they don't use the authorization header, there's a big chance that you're going to have a, uh, an, an IDOR. So that's a bit of a side tip there. If they don't use an authorization header, chances are a lot bigger for IDORs. Now, on to number two. You can test them in the Chrome Developer Tools. This may seem a little bit weird. You can actually test IDORs in Chrome Developer Tools, especially when it comes down to post put delete requests. You know, all of those requests, you cannot just copy and paste the URL into the uh, browser browsing bar. You actually have to um, put them in curl or do something like that, but that's really hard and that's difficult. And you can actually do that in the Firefox developer tools if you don't want to start up your burp. If you quickly want to do something, if you quickly want to, for example, test your post, you can easily do that in the Firefox developer tools. So you just open up your developer tools, you do the request that you want to do, then you're going to see in your network tab, so you go to your network tab in your developer tools in Chrome, and in there you're going to see your request. And then you have just have to right click that request, and you have just have to say edit and resend. If you click that, you're going to have a new window, and in there you're going to ha be able to um, replace all of the headers that you had and you can replace some of the values say for example you don't want the exact same name say for example you're changing the name of an organization and you want to test if that is vulnerable to IDOR you just edit and resend your post request like we just explained and you just change the name and you change the JWT token and the cookie uh, if you do that you can just resend it hit click send and there you go Another way to test for IDORs. Now on to number one, and this one is of course my very, very favorite. That's Authorize. I really, really love Authorize. I've made a ton of videos about it already. I'll put them in the description below as well. Because if you don't know how to use Authorize, it's really confusing. And especially for if you want to use it the first time, you're going to see a lot of colors and it's really confusing to use. So feel free to watch my videos about that. I'm going to do some more expert in-depth videos as well about Authorize because I think it's really important that you understand what you need to configure and how you need to configure it. That's really important for me uh, because if you don't do it right, you're going to have a whole lot of requests that you don't understand or requests that are being repeated that are polluting your results. And it's really annoying to deal with those requests, but you can easily get rid of them. I'll show you guys how later. 
so thank you guys very very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i want to know what are your ways for testing for insecure direct object reference put it down in the comments below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye everybody